Well, hey, good morning. This is Monday Morning Glory. Uh, you know, if there's no conspiracy theories, why do they keep giving us evidence that there's conspiracies going on? I'm having great difficulty getting videos posted to our YouTube page. I keep getting blocked. I'm not sure what I'm saying wrong. Uh, this is Monday Morning Glory. The times, they are a changing. Urge you to go and look online. You can find it on CNN, Fox News, lots of locations. Emmanuel Cleaver's closing prayer at a session of Congress yesterday. He prayed a prayer that many of us as Christians could have prayed until the very end when he said, in the name of the monotheistic God, comma, Brahma, a man and a woman, uh, just puzzling. Uh, number one, Brahma is not a monotheistic God. He's part of uh, a multiplicity of, of gods in Hinduism. Uh, maybe their hierarchy, Trinity, includes Brahma, uh, Vishnu, and, and um, I believe it's Shiva. Uh, Brahma probably being the least of those three, and yet he called out that name. And then, of course, the word Amen <laughs> from its original language means so be it or truthfully. It, it's not a gender word at all, and so it's really silly. Uh, anger and shock have been the responses by Christians. I want to urge us to get over the anger and shock and ask God, how do we respond to that? Uh, clearly, what uh, has been done in secret for a long time is now being done in the open. Uh, you might want to look this week at Ezekiel 8, 9, and 10 would be a places to look where uh, God took Ezekiel through a series of locations from a private location behind a wall in the temple to a public location. Uh, he said, he kept saying, I will show you yet more detestable things as he went from private locations of false worship, uh, calling out gods to uh, very public settings. And of course, now we have in a very public setting, uh, a bizarre closing in prayer by a, uh, uh, a Christian. He claims to be a Christian pastor. Uh, really showing, you know, some intellectual ignorance, actually, to close in prayer, saying amen and a woman, thinking that somehow amen is a gender uh, word. Uh, it, it's really silly. But again, we need to get over the shock and anger of that and, and say, God, how do we respond? What do we do? David had some mighty men called the men of Issachar. You can read about them in one verse, First Chronicles 12, 32. David said, uh, it says this in, in 1 Chronicles, that these were men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. Well, the times, they are a changing. And so we need to become men and women of Issachar, asking God, how do we respond in light of what's going on? Uh, I think we're going to have to uh, work much harder in our responses, be much more thoughtful, uh, really seeking God's anointing on our lives as we decide how to proceed. Uh, these are, are difficult times for America. And then to, to be you know calling out what I believe are just basically uh, uh, demons uh, is not going to bode well for our nation. Uh, sadly, I think we've learned this past year that we've moved from a democracy. I've trusted our democracy. Uh, I've done, you know, lobbying work, as I mentioned in worship yesterday, uh, trusted the democratic process, but now I see something more akin to a digital technocracy uh, where clearly uh, you and I perhaps don't really even count or matter. Uh, our spheres of influence where we can share the gospel you know, America's changing. <laughs> These times, they are a changing. This country, it is a changing. I don't like the direction uh, that our country is going. Haven't liked it for a long, long time. May we, in our spheres of influence, know how we should respond. After we get over our shock, after we get over our anger, this prayer particularly, uh, then say, God, how do we respond? Uh, yes, the world's changing. The mission of the church is not. The gospel has not. These times they are changing, but our God changes not. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He promised to never leave us. He promised to never forsake us. He promised to be with us. It's very interesting as the book of Mark closes. It says, the Lord went with them, confirming the word with signs following. That's going to be my topic in my sermon this coming Sunday. Uh, Let's really be seeking the Lord in this moment, in our time, in this history. This is our time. It's the time that God has given us. May we learn to redeem it. May we walk with wisdom towards those that are outside of the church so that we can respond appropriately, 
not drive them away with our responses of anger, but rather draw them closer to God as we demonstrate love in truth, but in a way that's compassionate and cares. You know, for everyone who disagrees with us, there is a soul behind that disagreement. And we need to remember that. Our job is not to win arguments. Our job is to see people's lives changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's remember that moving forward. If we respond inappropriately, I think we can do more harm than good. Uh, clearly, we have cause to pause. We have cause to be shocked, to be angry. But we need to overcome that and be about you know, our Father's business as Christians. Let's be men and women of Issachar, 1 Chronicles 12, 32. Seek God to know exactly how we, should, how we should respond in these days that we are living. The times, they are a-changing, but the gospel has not. And that gives me great hope and excitement for uh, our mission as the church. God bless you. This is Monday morning, glory. Have a great rest of the week. Most of us are heading back to our offices. Uh, many are beginning school again. Uh, Christmas, New Year's is over. Life begins. Let's go through this with Jesus in an anointing, in truth, and in great hope, and in love. God bless you today.